Happy May and welcome back. I'm Logan Dubel and you're watching This Week in Ocean City. Thank you for joining us as we inch closer and closer to Memorial Day, the unofficial start of summer. The weather is getting warmer and we are excited to see the streets of OC bustling with tourists in just a few more weeks. Today we'll cover everything from preparations for the September pop-up rally to the long-awaited Spring Fest. We'll also tell you about big news surrounding COVID-19 restrictions here in Maryland, and we'll discuss upcoming events such as Cruise and OC in the White Marlin Open. Plus, Ocean City will bring back the Boardwalk trams this summer, but will there be enough drivers? We'll dive deeper. Later, we'll highlight Ocean City Restaurant Week and even discuss the upcoming cicada invasion. Will it affect us here in OC? We've got an answer. Plus, a heartwarming story about a dog missing for 290 days after getting loose in Ocean City, now found, get this, more than 100 miles away and reunited with his family. The story you won't want to miss coming up. Thank you once again for joining us and now let's get to our top story. Well, when we launched this program in November, we began by discussing the alarming surge in COVID-19 cases across the state of Maryland. But now we are happy to see the bright light at the end of the tunnel with a major restriction being lifted by Ocean City Mayor Rick Meehan. The mayor announced this week that masks are no longer required on the boardwalk and all other outdoor public spaces. Those who are not vaccinated are still encouraged to wear a mask, especially when distancing is not possible. The mandate was first enacted by the city council last July as cases skyrocketed. This latest change in policy by the town follows Governor Larry Hogan's announcement that masks are no longer required outdoors in the state of Maryland. Hogan also lifted all restrictions on outdoor dining. Restrictions on standing service, capacity, and distancing are all lifted. We're glad to see this progress and hope this positive momentum continues into the summer. Although things may be returning to normal, Ocean City remains plagued and challenged by the lack of seasonal workers. J-1 international workers, who typically make up a third of the 12,000-person workforce, may still not be able to arrive due to embassy closures despite the lifting of many restrictions. However, there is a twist. As reported by Ocean City Today, local commerce leaders are turning to more than 100 H-2B workers who are adults on non-immigrant temporary work visas. This will serve businesses like like Jolly Roger Amusement Park very well. However, this still won't solve the problem as restaurants and hotels fear there will be high demand coupled with an inability to meet it. Many businesses may opt to open at lower capacity or for fewer days if they are unable to find more employees. But if you're looking for a job at the beach, this is your year. And now to preparations for the pop-up rally event, also known as H2OI. While the end of September may seem very far away, Ocean City officials say that preparations cannot begin soon enough. To say that this event is a challenge for local law enforcement as well as residents is an understatement. For those who don't know, the pop-up rally is a four-day event organized online featuring daring drivers in their cars racing up and down Coastal Highway. Last week, town leaders from numerous departments along with citizens came to City Hall to discuss ways to improve the town's management of the 2021 pop-up rally. Last year, the town prepared by creating a special events zone with alternative traffic patterns and heightened regulations. They also called in hundreds of police officers from ally law enforcement agencies. Although the situation certainly improved from the previous year, lawlessness from a predominantly young and out-of-town crowd disrupted life as usual in Ocean City. The police department promises readiness and will expand upon many of the actions they took last year. Particularly, they will work to ensure that what happened last year on Saturday when there were 127 arrests alone does not occur again. And we look forward to seeing more of those preparations to keep Ocean City safe. And now to our cover story, one of the most highly anticipated events in Ocean City. Spring Fest runs May 6th through 9th and promises to be bigger and better than ever before. Celebrating its 30th anniversary, Spring Fest is one of the premier arts and craft shows in the entire country. It also includes live music, great eastern shore foods, along with beer and wine. As one of the first major events canceled last year due to the pandemic, the return of Spring Fest marks a return to normalcy and a big win for the town of Ocean City. Take a look. From the bright lights of Winterfest to the spectacular plains of the air show, Ocean City is home to numerous exciting special events that attract thousands of people. This year's long-awaited Spring Fest is expected to be bigger and better than ever before. In 30 years of Spring Fest, much has changed in Ocean City, but this joyful family weekend has always been a constant source of Eastern Shore spirit. Taking place at the Inlet Lot along the world-famous boardwalk and right by the beach, Springfest is in a prime location. 
From live music to foods, drinks, arts and crafts and shopping, people will stay occupied for hours. The continued support of the festival by people from all over the country is what has kept the event going for three decades. People look forward to it year after year. They've been coming since they were kids and now they're bringing their kids. What I think is really neat too is that after being cooped up for so long, all of us are ready to, you know, we all have spring fever. So uh, there's nothing better than celebrating with an event like Spring Fest. Spring Fest will also look more normal than expected. In accordance with state guidance, masks will no longer be required at Spring Fest outdoors as initially planned. The return of Spring Fest is a reminder of how far we've truly come and the need to ring in the warm summer beach season. Live DJs and bands are booked daily from start to finish, and more than 250 vendors are expected to be in attendance. Still, no larger or indoor ticketed concerts are allowed per state ordinances, so the festival will be different in that regard. However, tents will be set up as usual for food, beer, and wine vendors, and will be left open on the sides to improve ventilation. Springfest will still be profitable for the town with a predicted thirty to forty thousand dollar profit gain, accounting for decreases in expenses and possible smaller crowds. The town says if the weather is nice, one hundred thousand people could come through Springfest over four days, which would be fantastic. Really special for for really everybody in the whole family. So, um, if you haven't done it before, I would really recommend it. Um, you know, a lot of people. Still, believe it or not, don't always know what exactly it is. And I just can tell you that it's four days of great fun, great music, great food, great entertainment, and all around great fun. Parking is available at the West Ocean City Park and Ride, and you can take the $3 shuttle. You can also ride the Coastal Highway Beach Bus for $3 all day, and that bus will make trips every 20 minutes. Springfest will go on as scheduled from May 6th through May 9th, rain or shine, Open from 10 to 8 on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and 10 to 6 on Sunday. Admission is free, and we hope to see you there. Sunfest is not the only great thing to do on the Eastern Shore the second weekend in May. Nearby Berlin is hosting its 13th annual Jazz and Blues Festival, May 7th through 9th. Featuring live music at several restaurants over three days, the family-friendly festival is thrilled to promote a return to normalcy. Along with the music, vendors and artisans will have booths all day long on Saturday. Don't miss out on this great springtime event. And the special events calendar continues to fill up with Cruise and OC now in its 30th year, slated from May 20th through the 23rd. The nationally recognized event takes place at the Inlet Lot as well as the Convention Center and includes hot rods, muscle cars, vendors, entertainment, and more. The best part is the special boardwalk parade starting at 8 a.m. on North Division Street and then heading down south. Tickets are $10 per day on Thursday and Sunday and $15 a day on Friday and Saturday. There are also more than 500 trophies and 3,000 giveaways. You can call the number on your screen for more information. As we noted before, things at restaurants are starting to return to pre-pandemic norms and it couldn't come at a better time. It's officially Ocean City Restaurant Week now through May 16th. Run by the Hotel Motel Restaurant Association, this is the first restaurant week since the pandemic started. This is the perfect chance to try something new and support your local restaurants. Participating establishments include Fager's Island, The Hobbit, The Bayview Bar and Grill, The Captain's Table, and Horizons Oceanfront Restaurant. You can head over to OceanCityRestaurantWeek.com com for more on the latest deals. A major and positive story now out of the restaurant industry about Pier 23, a new restaurant managed by the Tostin Group, which ran the former Ember's Buffet. After facing several hurdles over the past few months, construction has finally started. The site was previously occupied by the group's Madfish Bar and Grill, which was destroyed in an August 2019 fire. Pier 23, an open-air concept restaurant built partially out of shipping containers, is an industry-leading establishment offering live music and the perfect atmosphere. The Worcester County Board of License commissioners held up the approval of the site due to noise concerns from residents, but after the management team pledged to invest in special speakers, sound barriers, and meters, the board signed off on the project. Ocean City's first container food port, Pier 23, is currently set to open in July. Shipping containers seem to be the new trend here at the beach with the local staple and premier bar Secrets recently receiving approval to operate a carry-out beverage bar from a reused shipping container as well. The container will sit adjacent to the north side of the property and serve customers with their favorite drinks carry-out style.
A few updates now as many places reopen their doors for the summer. Fan favorite restaurants like Mackey's and The Angler just opened this week. Also, Ocean 13, the restaurant previously housed inside the Beach Plaza Hotel before it closed earlier this year, is gearing up to reopen on 32nd Street right in front of the La Quinta Hotel. A date will be announced very soon. It still may seem like a while away, but in less than three months, the 48th annual White Marlin Open will take over the town. The annual Billfish Tournament is set for August 2nd through 6th right here in the White Marlin capital of the world. With more than 400 boats competing last year, nearly $7 million awarded in prizes, 2021 will be even bigger and better than ever, if you can believe it. Harbor Island at 14th Street, famous for the daily weigh-ins, which typically attract thousands of spectators, will still host the festival this year, though it's unclear what sorts of capacity restrictions will remain by August. What is official, though, is that the first ever full-fledged Marlin Fest will run at the 3rd and 4th Streets Park. A smaller scale event ran at the same location last summer, but was significantly scaled down. This year, the event will feature vendors, live streams of the tournament on large screens, entertainment, food, drinks, and more. The City Council unanimously approved these plans, and you can stay tuned for more specifics as the event draws closer. They're back this year, that's right. After 17 years, cicadas are expected to make their return by mid-May, serving as an unwanted nuisance. The last time cicadas made an appearance in the U.S. was back in 2004, when 15 states were affected by this very interesting biological process. However, experts have promised that while they may be a problem inland, Ocean City will be a cicada-free zone. The flying and crawling Brudex cicadas emerge from underground and emit mating calls with volumes reaching up to a whopping 100 decibels. Taking advantage of the unique situation, Ocean City plans to bring back its successful advertising campaign from nearly two decades ago, inviting those annoyed by the millions of cicadas to come down to Ocean City for some relief. If you love your annual pictures at the beach from Telescope Pictures, you can rest assured that the popular service will remain on Ocean City's beaches through at least 2023. Earlier this month, the City Council approved a contract extension for Telescope, which offers family portraits on the sand. The business was hit hard by the pandemic, but hopes to rebound this summer with people resuming travel once again. If you're interested in carrying a camera throughout the summer and working right on the sand with Telescope, visit MyTelescopePictures.com for employment information. Ocean City will soon become a little bit safer. The City Council voted unanimously to construct a brand new fire department facility at 66th Street in the parking lot in front of the Public Safety Building. This will replace the 74th Street Building, which has been in operation since 1969. Among the many problems associated with the old building are that the vehicles the station uses are too big to clear the front overhead doors. Fire officials are elated by the Council decision. Since this project has been in discussion, forget this, more than two decades. The current building is in poor shape and has poor functionality. Next, engineers will finish their plans before the $5 million project officially begins. It's now time for your Boardwalk Breakdown, the latest stories from Ocean City's hottest spot. First, if you're planning on riding a bike on the Boardwalk this summer, here are the hours during which you'll be permitted to do so. New this year, from Memorial Day through Labor Day, bike riders will have access to the Boardwalk from 2 a.m. to noon, which is a one-hour extension compared to previous years. The City Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee floated the idea of beginning biking hours at midnight to allow Boardwalk workers to travel home on better-lit streets, but also voted against the idea since the boardwalk remains crowded even at midnight. Still, bicyclists will enjoy the extra hour in the morning, and additionally, a new bike pump, which could be the first of many across the town, will be set up in the next couple of weeks at the south end of the boardwalk, keeping bicyclists going if they ever have an issue. Next, as you might remember from last summer, the town delayed one of its major projects, the redecking of the boardwalk. However, resort officials say that the $2.2 million project can no longer wait. Redecking is completed every 8 to 10 years from the inlet up to 27th Street. The project is already funded, but lumber shortages as a result of the pandemic have caused prices to climb tremendously, while availability remains low. Although it's one of the worst times to buy wood, city officials say that this is how it worked out and the boardwalk is in desperate need of new wood. The project is expected to begin shortly. As many people know, the Boardwalk trams will return this summer. They were shut down entirely due to COVID-19 last year. Although there will likely be enough people to fill the trams, finding drivers has been a significant concern this year with 12 less drivers than necessary. 
With the relaxing of COVID restrictions on the boardwalk, ridership could increase to pre-pandemic levels. While the town will surely find a way to manage, they still hope to find more drivers. Although many are between the ages of 60 and 80, anyone 19 and older can serve as a tram operator and must meet certain requirements. You can visit the town's website for details. If you're looking for a chance to be on the bustling boardwalk and see the sights and sounds of OC all summer long, this might be the job for you. Finally, from the boardwalk, on a brighter note, if you were in Ocean City at the end of April, you may have seen the 26th annual Maryland International Kite Expo. The nonprofit festival welcomed spectators from 4th through 6th streets and featured creative kites of all sizes, along with synchronized stunt teams. Sponsored by the Kite Loft, the event was a real hit with a large boardwalk crowd and perfect spring weather. And that's your boardwalk breakdown with a lot happening on the boards ahead of the big summer rush. At the end of April, the Ocean City Convention Center hosted the annual Home Condo and Outdoor Show, now in its 37th year. The event, which is sponsored by Ocean Promotions, is targeted at new beach homeowners or those looking to start renovations. With 30 vendors to talk with, there was plenty to do. In addition, 30 arts and craft vendors were present, but the show was still smaller than in typical years. You can visit oceanpromotions.info for more details and a list of vendors in case you miss the event. It's being hailed as one of the wildest stories to ever happen in Ocean City, and now it finally has a happy ending. Fisher, a dog who went missing in Ocean City on July 4th, 2020, was recently found after 290 days. For the Boston Terriers family, it seemed as though chances of reuniting with their beloved dog were slim to none. However, with the power of social media and a lot of hope, Fisher is now home. Here's the story and interview you'll see only on OceanCity.com. It's a story for the Ocean City history books. What started as an annual family vacation for Alyssa and Matthew Batista quickly turned into a nine-month-long emotional roller coaster. Alyssa and Matthew of New York City spend every summer in Ocean City. Last year, while staying at the north end of the boardwalk in a condo on 27th Street, the perfect storm of devastating events occurred, leaving their family without their beloved dog, Fisher. The Boston Terrier went missing on July 4th, 2020, as fireworks rang loudly from every corner of the resort. Since official town fireworks were canceled last year due to the pandemic, people up and down Ocean City set off their own displays. For this family's five-month-old daughter, the loud bangs surely weren't ideal, so they settled in for the night. After, when realizing Fisher wasn't in their bedroom, they figured he had gone to sleep in Matt's parents' room. That wasn't the case. Two-year-old Fisher had learned over the course of the week-long vacation, which was just about to end, how to open the screen door in the condo. Somehow, Fisher found his way out at night, and the rest is a tale only Fisher will ever know. Immediately, the family made hundreds of signs, posted nonstop on social media, searched the streets of Ocean City, paid for beachside advertisements, and even started their own social media page. Find Fisher, which has now amassed more than 9,000 followers. After escaping, he likely took a stroll along Coastal Highway up to around 45th Street, but after making it that far, Fisher was likely taken. It's unknown where Fisher lived for the past year, but he was well taken care of and fed. Then he escaped from wherever he was living and made it to Northern Parkway in Baltimore City, where Wayne Horn was working outside on his motorcycle when Fisher came up to him. Horn immediately called his friend and had a vet check Fisher for a microchip. He quickly came into contact with Fisher's family, who sent their friends who live in Maryland to pick him up. In just a matter of hours, Fisher was finally reunited with Alyssa. You know, last Tuesday, I get this message on Facebook, and I, I, I'm like, okay, I'll open it. And then I see the pictures, and there were a lot of four letter words involved, but they were, you know, I just, I couldn't believe it. And you know, I, my daughter, my husband was feeding my daughter dinner and I just shouted downstairs and I was like, it's Fisher, we found Fisher. The shock of seeing Fisher was a long time coming for Alyssa after 290 days of perseverance. She's grateful for the thousands of people that supported her and shared her message from start to finish. The moral of this wild story, always keep your eye out, keep a collar on your dogs, and microchip them. Without that device, Fisher may have never been found safe. While she's upset Fisher wasn't returned sooner, she's elated that he's finally home. She said she would have looked for 30 years if she had to. Alyssa hopes that the Facebook page continues to be a place where people can share their lost dogs 
and never lose hope. The joy that I felt reuniting with him was immeasurable. And I want to bring that to as many other families as I can. So our hope is to, on that Facebook page, just continue to share lost pets, continue to spread the word of lost pets. And I think the most important thing people have to realize is don't give up. Don't stop sharing your lost pets posters. Because after a month, I'm assuming that people probably thought we would have given up at that point. But I was not giving up. Fisher, actually named for Fisher's popcorn, will probably be boarded this summer. But rest assured, Alyssa and her family will be back to Ocean City, Maryland. May will be yet another busy month at the Art League of Ocean City. You can now visit the Arts Center in person with the next First Friday Arts opening on May 7th from 5 to 7 p.m. Also check out new satellite locations at the Princess Royale and the Coffee Beanery. Exhibits for this month include Expressive Plain Air Plus in the Thaler Gallery, which includes works painted outdoors. In the Galleria, a photography show entitled Up Close and Personal showcases special moments that might be overlooked. In Studio E, Baltimore screen painter Lisa Marie Penn will display her talents, while Wood Turners Paul and Andrew Neeb are the artisans of the month. You can see all these shows online and in person until May 29th. Now for some local history. Not many places in Ocean City can say that they've been around in three different centuries. However, Trippers on the Boardwalk is one of them, now entering its 128th year in the business. Recognized as the oldest family-owned amusement park in the world, Trippers was founded by Margaret and Daniel Trimper in 1893. For some perspective, Grover Cleveland had just begun his second term as president, and Thomas Edison was wrapping up another invention. After moving to Ocean City, the Trimpers purchased properties all along the boardwalk, and most most notably, the fun all started in 1912 when they purchased the Herschel Spillman Carousel, which still operates to this day. Rides cost just a nickel at the time, and the carousel is one of the oldest continually operating rides in the United States. One other famous ride, the Trimper's Haunted House, was built all the way back in 1964. The park initially only included indoor rides, but expanded to feature outdoor amusements in the 1950s. Today, with more than 40 attractions, including the brand new Inlet Eye, Trimper's has remained a go-to destination for more than a century. Century. Be sure to visit upcoming events in the month of May, such as Sun Fun OC, car shows, and even Trimpers Goes Wild, featuring live animals in the park. You can head over to TrimperRides.com for more information. And that's it for this episode of This Week in Ocean City. I'm Logan Dubel. Thanks so much for joining us and for making our last episode our most watched yet. Spread the word. We are the online home for all your local headlines, details about exciting events, and everything that matters to both residents and tourists and one of the world's best destinations. We'll be back again later in May, and it's almost time for the summer, and we can't wait to see you at the beach very soon. Have a great week, Ocean City.